What is up you guys, it is your boy Brent Vegas here and welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be doing my 2024 NFL Mock Draft. In today's video, or, <laughs> oh god, we're going to be doing the NFL 2024 Mock Draft and it's going to be a little interesting to say the least to see how this Mock Draft is going to go for me. Uh, because, um, I wasn't looking at everybody, but like, I don't really think that is required. The only thing I think is important is the position and then where they're ranked and stuff. So let's get into the video. And I also do do a little scout stuff. So just to say that. But anyway, let's get into the video. Start off with the first overall pick owned by the Chicago Bears. I don't even think it's even obvious. <laughs> really? Is it, is it really obvious? No, it's Caleb Williams. Are you kidding me? Caleb Williams, without a doubt, is going to be the first overall pick. Somehow, like, there's no way it's nothing else. I don't even have anything else to say because it's obvious. Then you got the Commanders at number two. Um, I think we're going to go draft Jalen Daniels. Jalen Daniels, I just think, is probably most likely going to be their draft because it seems that they're leaning a little bit more towards Jalen Daniels instead of Drake May, which is okay because there are some things that Jalen Daniel has and Drake May doesn't. Patriots, without a doubt, I didn't go with Drake May here. I don't think there's any sort of imaginization world where they don't go with that. And Arizona, I think I'm actually going to see, we're going to do a trade Arizona will be trading the number four overall pick. And then Minnesota will be trading up for the 11, 2023, you know, first round pick with an additional. Okay, this is weird. Hold on a minute. So, we're going to do that, right? The two first draft picks that they own this year for exchange of the number four overall pick and the 90th overall pick. So, the Cardinals, they get to trade down and, you know, get multiple first round picks. The Vikings, what they get, they get a ton of good players to work around with. And also in terms of this, uh, I just like I, I just think it makes sense overall. Now we actually, you know what? Uh, yeah, hold on a minute. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I just needed to do some things. Um, but anyway, with the pick, I I don't think it's a shocker to anybody. They go with J. Jay McCarthy. Just think I makes it, it makes sense. Like, you know, they get their quarterback. I think JJ McCarthy though will probably, if I was the Vikings, I would have him as my backup quarterback and let him sit behind um Sam Donald for a year. Then you got the Chargers. Chargers have a very tough choice to make. They could either take one of the best prospects and Marvin Harrison Jr. Or they could go get Joe Alt to fix the offensive line. It's honestly very tough for them because, like, I understand that they need receiver right now. But, like, really, when you think about it, the receiver core isn't really that bad. Like, you got Quinton Johnston. You got Jason Palmer. You know, pretty decent receivers. And then, plus, you still have, like, what, Tyler Boyd. Uh, DJ Chark, like, you get all these other people still available in the free agency. So why not just try to go target them? Or go get, like, Odell Beckham or something, like I said. So you kind of have an interesting choice here, and it's honestly going to depend on how they do things for the rest of free agency, which is maybe why I might want to do another mock draft, I think, the day before the draft. But this pick, I will be taking... Marvin Harrison. Okay, I, like, I mean, let's face it. Like, how could they pass up on Marvin Harrison? It's just a little too hard for me 
to think that they're gonna pass up on him. It, it, it's just it, it just can't. I'm sorry. The Giants, I think, without a certain of a doubt, then they take Roma Dunze from Washington. I just I, I just can't see them not drafting a receiver here. Like they have to draft a receiver. If not, it's probably gonna be a lineman or maybe some secondary player. I don't know. Or they just trade back in general, which has been also a central ideal for this team. The Titans, uh, I definitely see them going with Joe Alt tackle from Notre Dame. They just need all lineman help, and Peter Skronsky is a guard, so with him and Joe Alt, that will be a very, very stellar offensive line. Atlanta, I definitely see them going with Dallas Turner, edge from Alabama. They need to get pass rush, and there, there, there is no better way to doing that by getting, well, by Dallas Turner, who's the best defensive player in this draft. Then, with this pick, I honestly don't know what to do for the Bears here. Because the Bears are in a interesting perspective. So, I think what they do here is they trade with Arizona. That's what I think they do. They trade with Arizona for the 23rd and 27 overall pick. The Chicago Bears, they trade away the 9th overall pick and a 2025 second round pick, which is... Oh, wait, never mind. Oh. Interesting. Uh, but then, I think that's probably about it. And then I get... I, well, and at 2025 second, which is also going to trade a 66 overall pick. Actually, no. Uh, yeah. And then the 158 overall pick. So the trade goes, gets accepted. Arizona is all the way back up to 9. Where they're going to be taking Malik Neighbors. Now you're like, wait, why would you do this? As you're the Arizona Cardinals when you just got all those draft picks. Well, you're getting a top, you're getting basically one of the best receivers in this class, and you can definitely use some receiving help, so I think it's honestly pretty fair. Jets, probably some people might want, like, Talisa Funga, Opawee Fashanu, you probably would have probably want one of those players, but I'm actually going to go with Brock Bowers from Georgia. I really am curious to see how that offense would work with Brock Bowers, Mike Williams, and also, if you guys completely forgot, Garrett Wilson and also Alan Hazard. So a very, very top receiving core. And honestly, in my opinion, I think it'd be one of the best receiving cores in the league. Then with the Cardinals, Cardinals have a lot of directions they could take with this pick. But to me, I think they go and take Ophelin Fushanu, who is... I think just like a true left tackle and honestly could be one of the best players on that O line. Pair him with Paris Johnson. That could be a very, very good offensive line for years to come. Then you have the Denver Broncos, which they don't have a pick until like what is it, like the third round? So I definitely can't see them trading down. But at the same time, they could also argue that they could draft a quarterback like Michael Penix or uh, Bo Nix. But I kind of just see them trading down from the spot. I just don't know who. Like, who would want to trade down or trade up at this point? So, but what I think they could definitely do is draft a receiver but again, like even then, like do you think that Brian Thompson can go this high or Antonio Mitchell? But then you're like, oh wait, couldn't they just draft tight end? Oh wait, Brock Bowers is not here. So I think it just makes sense that they trade down. The problem is, is just who would like to trade up in this at this point? Honestly, this actually might be interesting. What if we did throw in the Green Bay Mother Love and Packers? trade up with the Broncos here. They do have a lot of draft capital, if you guys didn't know. So I have the Packers trading up for exchange of the 25th overall pick, the 58th overall pick, which that means they still keep the 41 overall pick, which is by the Jets, and the 91 overall pick. 
which they go up here, in my opinion, they could definitely take corner, which they have any they could pick anybody who they want at corner, but I actually am gonna actually have them trade up to go get Televise Afunga out of Oregon State. He's arguably without a doubt, I think a very, very good offensive tackle. Does this team really not need tackle right now? Not necessarily, but I still think that having him on that roster could definitely help out. And, you know, you may not want to start him right away. Or just, you know, be a rotational player or something like that. You know, full, so on and so forth. Then you have the Raiders. Raiders is an interesting thing. They could definitely take quarterback. They have Michael Penix Jr. still available. But I don't really see them going with quarterback here. And then I would say most likely defense. And let's go draft, I guess, the best corner available. And Quincy Mitchell out of Toledo. Very big, very talented. They also really just need defense in general. I think they could definitely fix up that defense. So I think this was definitely the right pick. Then you got the New Orleans Saints, who do actually have a lot of draft picks, but I just don't really see them trading down from the spot. But with this pick, I see them going and select Troy Afunga from Washington. They need a tackle. He is a tackle, and I think that could be a, definitely an excellent pick by the Indianapolis Colts with this pick. Then you have the Indianapolis Colts. It is interesting, like, what they could do with this pick. They could go get another receiver if they wanted to. They could have gotten maybe another edge rusher, tentacly, or de-tackle to maybe potentially at maybe replace the Fortness Butler. Maybe get a linebacker. And then trade down, or they could get a corner. But I think they do go with corner here, and they go with Taron Arnold out of Alabama. Just, you know, they need corner, and I think a lot of people are just having them take corner, and I think that makes sense. The Seahawks, I have them trading down from this spot, but I don't think they're going to trade down with a team that doesn't have a first or a second that they're going to give up. So. I don't know who to probably do here. Houston. No. I mean, I guess let's see. Let's see. What does Baltimore think? I honestly could, could see Baltimore trading with Seattle. Um... I don't know what to do, honestly. Because, like, Seahawks have a lot of needs, but I would definitely say this is a good spot for them to trade down. Which, actually, the more I think about it, this is what I'm going to do. So, we're going to do something a little interesting here. Right? So, let's say, T like, somehow T. Higgins gets traded, right? Actually, you know what? Never mind. Let me just trade with the Bears. I mean, never mind. Hold on a minute. All right, so here's what I did. So we had the Tampa Bay Buccaneers trade up the 26 and the 57 overall pick to move up all the way to 16, where they go and select Cooper DeGene. I think they could definitely use corner. They did, after all, just trade Carlton Davis. I just definitely see them drafting defense with this pick. So I'm gonna go with Carlton Davis, who is an excellent or Cooper Jean, who is an amazing corner. Then you have Jacksonville. It's an interesting spot they are in, but I definitely see them going with. Um, we're gonna have them go with Kule McKinstry from Alabama. They definitely can definitely use corner. And it, I, I just think it kind of makes sense with this pick. Cincinnati. 
honestly, I think I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Braxton Murphy from Texas. Now it just makes sense, right? You've lost DJ Reader. Now you don't really have anybody outside of Trey Hendrickson from your front seven. So I think it kind of just makes sense that they go and get their guy in Byron Murphy. Now you got the Rams at this pick. And honestly, I see them either going with Edge, which I do think that they're probably going to go with Edge here, or quarterback. Quarterback, because Michael Penix is right there. Michael Penix is literally right there. But I do think they go with Lotte Lotu from UCLA. They need an edge rusher. Aaron Donald retiring is just not going to help matters. So getting a lot to law to to pair him up with players like Byron Murphy and Cody Turner can definitely be a nice start to refixing that team. Then you have the Pittsburgh Steelers. I would kind of say they would get corner, but I don't think so. They could definitely use linebacker as well. So like maybe this is, could be where Peyton Wilson or Air G. Cooper do get drafted. Funny enough, actually, I think they... Yeah, I think they did trade it down during... The, no, no, they got Devin Bush. They traded up and got David Bush. Whoops. But... I would probably say they go with then J.C. Lankham from Alabama... They definitely need another tackle, and with Brock St. Jones there, that could be a nice old line to refix this old line. Then you got the Miami Dolphins, and I actually have them going with Jackson Power Johnson from Oregon. They need to fix that interior offensive line with Connor Williams being gone, and honestly, you really need to worry about Tua's health. I would definitely say for the factor that they should definitely go with linemen and Powers Johnson can just be that new Connor Williams for you. Then you got the Philadelphia Eagles. Honestly, I see with this pick, they go with best player available. And also a kind of ish in a position of need. And with Jason Kelsey retiring, I think they go with Graham Barton out of Duke. They need a center. And I just think, really, the only big position to need right now for them, I would say, would be center. So I think that would make sense as the pick here. Then you got the Chicago Bears. I'm a little tempted, not going to lie, to go with Javon Burst. Imagine him on that defense. That will be pretty terrifying. And did I forget to mention that they have two first-round picks in this draft? So... Because, like, the edge rushing class in afterwards, it drops all the way to from Demirian Robertson. He's not bad. I think he maybe could make it into the first round. But just not really, I would say, the ideal player here. They don't really need corner. They could definitely actually use safety, I feel like. Eh, I guess they could use corner, but you get the point. They already have Caleb Williams. I do feel like IRL, they may have gotten another receiver, but I think it's a little hard for them to pass up on Brian Roberts Thompson's talent at 23. If he was available, I you got to admit, you have to go get him. That is so big for them to go get somebody at that point to get him at this spot. The Dallas Cowboys. They have actually a number of things they could go with here. They could... Maybe reach for a running back like Jonathan Brooks. They could potentially get a receiver in Anton Mitchell. Go get tackle to replace uh, Tyron Smith. Go get a defensive end or edge. And honestly, I think they do go with Javon Urs here. They just need edge and... You know, they need more pass rushers, I would say, with Dermot Armstrong leaving the free agency kind of does hurt, so I think they definitely go with that year. Denver, without a second of a doubt, they go with Michael Penix Jr. from Washington. Like, the fact he's still available would be unbelievable, I think, for Denver fans, and that's why, without a doubt, they have to be taking him here. Then you got the Seattle Seahawks picking at 26, and I think without a doubt, they go with Jazan Newton out of Illinois. They need somebody who could stop that run and also just be a literal god at that position. 
And he could definitely be very good for that. And that's why, therefore, I go with him. Then, with this pick, I go with Nate Wiggins out of Clemson. They could definitely use another corner, and the fact he's also available is just, like, insane. So, without a doubt, I think they go with him here, and that's why they go draft him. Then, with the Bills, I don't think this comes to a shocker for anybody. I go with Anton Mitchell from Texas. Explosive receiver who could definitely be a good complement for uh, your boy in terms of being Curtis Samuel. Lions, without a doubt, they take with whoever's the best corner available, but really there's not really any good corner options. The only thing I could say they could use is interior guard, but again, they could also address that later. So I think this is a team that really just trades back at this point. And you know what team could definitely use a first-round pick that don't have one this year? You got yourselves the Carolina Panthers. So the Carolina Panthers, I think, decide to trade up at this point because, well, they have the draft capital. So I have them trade the 23rd the, the and the 65th overall pick to trade with the Detroit Lions. Actually, okay. You know what? Carolina, 39-63. They still say that's too much. So we're going to trade the 39th overall pick and the 101 overall pick for them to move up. So they still have their second this year, which is the first overall pick in that second round. And why is it not going? Hold on a minute. So I'll just do the, you know, I'll do the 33rd overall pick and like a 142 overall pick. Why is it not going? Okay. Okay, let's just say that the Panthers, they traded up. I think though, without a doubt, they have to go with Marnie's Mims. They have to if he was available at the spot. So, makes sense, you know, for them and stuff like that. Then you got the Baltimore Ravens. Um, Jesus Lord. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens, they got a lot of things they could do here, honestly. But for them here, I say they go with probably the best edge rusher available, and that would be Chop Robinson out of Penn State. It says the Marion Robinson, but let's face it, it's Chop Robinson, all right? And he is an explosive edge rusher. He had like a 4.44 in the combine, just very explosive, to say the least. The San Francisco 49ers, I can definitely see them drafting receiver if, you know, he's not available or he's not there on the roster anymore. But what you never know with Trent Williams' age. Uh, I want to go with Tyler Gutton out of Oklahoma. They just really need offensive tackle. And, you know, also you had that play where Chris Jones just got in there and beat him up. I think that can definitely be the pick. KC, without a doubt, I think they go with Xavier Worthy out of KC. I just don't see them not drafting um, a receiver with that pick. I just can't. So, honestly, I think this is a very, very good draft for them. And hope you guys enjoyed this video. Peace.